Thanks everyone uh, for listening to last week's broadcast. It was a it was a sovereign moment, amen. There was a it was a time of um, like I said, Jesus Christ passing between the pieces, amen. The order of Melchizedek, amen, our high priest, amen, which we all also that same order, amen. Um, hallelujah. Well, I posted the outline there. That's what we're going to be talking about today. But uh, I want to share a couple of scriptures this morning. Um, let's start off with prayer, amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord God, for this time, Father. I thank you, Lord God, for these times of refreshing in your presence, O oh God. I thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy, O oh God, in our lives, Father. I thank you, Lord God, that the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And of his fullness have we all received in grace for grace. We lumbano, Father, we take all that we can take of your presence right now, Father, and of your life and of your glory and of your word and of your spirit, O oh God. And grace for grace, Father. I thank you that you give us the grace to move to the next level of grace. Amen. I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, for your word, Father, that declares, Father God, that, that we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, and yet without sin. Therefore, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace, amen, that we may find grace and mercy. To help, that we may find mercy and grace to help in a time of need, Father. And Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that you're faithful. You're faithful to your people, Father. One thing I know we have need of is your presence. I thank you, Lord God, that your word is life unto those who find them and help to all their flesh, Father. But I thank you, Lord God, that the entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple, Father. I thank you that in him, Jesus Christ was life and the life was the light. And that life is in me, glory to God. And by that life, we have light in the spirit. Amen. We can see clearly, Father, what you're saying to your church in this hour. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, for all those that will be watching today and those that will be partaking in the future, Father. I bless you, Father, and I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, glory to God. Hey, Richard. I trust everybody's heaven has, has had a... As a good week in the Lord, amen, conquering and, and staying maintained in the word, amen. You know, one of the things about uh, that scripture that I just read, I mean, that I prayed in, in uh, in uh, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4, right? all right, now this, this, this particular chapter, boy, just so much God has been ministering to my personal life, and Revealing so much of his word to me, and uh, I'm so grateful for it, amen. But it says here that, uh, verse 14, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Now, if you remember last week, I talked a lot about the preceding verse and what God is saying in that scripture and what he's, what he's done for us through Jesus Christ. But hold fast our profession is master your profession. Your profession is your your uh, acknowledgement, amen, your confession of the Word of God. So it's important, amen, that we maintain our profession. And um, and, and part of that is, uh, I just said that, that I trust that everyone is maintaining, amen, the ground that you have in the Lord by the Spirit. In other words, you know, one of the things about the enemy, Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, is that, the thief cometh not before to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life, Zoe, and have it more abundantly. And I've clearly talked about that many times, is that eternal life wasn't about some eternal moment that's going to be happening for us and we're going to be living forever. Eternal life was about now partaking of the life, which is Jesus Christ, Zoe, the life of God. Partaking of that on a day-by-day -day basis, amen. Amen. Being inspired by your spirit, man, as you pray and as God breathes on that word, knowing that you have a, a direct rhema from God, God is speaking to you directly in your spirit, amen. And by the way, your spirit, man, is the Holy of Holies. That's where all this is happening, man. This is the tabernacle that he always desired to build, amen. And he told Moses, make it according to the pattern that I showed you in the mountain. You see, the pattern was you. The pattern was the body of Christ. All collectively will be coming together and manifesting God's glory in the earth by destroying the works of the devil. 
So we know that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? He's trying to take from you what you already have in Christ. Jesus already did the work. We have to take it by faith. Grace gave it. Faith takes it. Amen. For by grace are you saved through faith and not out of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Grace are you saved through faith. Saved there is in Ephesians. Let's look at it real quick. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 8, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So the word saved there is the word sozo, S-O-Z-O, which means it's an all-inclusive word, which means salvation is in its totality. In other words, obviously deliverance and freedom from sin and its, and its death and what it causes. Romans chapter 8, verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. So we're free from the law of sin and death, right, in Christ. That's one thing. Salvation it also includes healing, healing in our bodies, amen. Matthew, Mark chapter 16, I'm going to start with verse 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, so so, but he that believeth not shall be damned. All these signs shall follow them that believe, all right? One thing about the Word of God is that it wasn't just something that was for them, for their time. You know, you have a lot of doctrines out there that tell us these things that that uh, the reason these things aren't happening today is because they're not a, for today. In other words, healing is not for today. Deliverance from devils and demonic activity is not for today. Uh, and of course, they believe forgiveness of sins is for today. <laughs> and what I'm saying to you is that the Word of God is eternal. It was an eternal thing. It was an eternal moment right here. It was a sovereign moment. And but, but if you, by faith, can grab the word of God in your spirit and begin to confess that word, homologia, speak the same as the word, it's going to be the same thing for you today. See, God doesn't see things the way we see them. We're not. He's not limited by time. We are in the dispensation of grace right now. We were in the dispensation of law with Moses. But the scripture says that the law came by Moses, John 1, 17, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, the grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So this scripture right here, he that believeth and is baptized shall be so so, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs, signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Raboko, rabo sakata, raboko, rabo dasata. Rabo nasikata, raboko, rakanandai. Praise God. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Okay? Sick is the ones that are without strength. They're weak, and they're sick. They're infirm. They have infirmity on their bodies, on their lives, on their minds, on their emotional realm. Every aspect of them is, has a problem, in other words. In other words, it's a, it, all those are, are, are sickness, infirmities. They shall recover. Recover is the Greek word kalos, which means beautiful, finely, excellently, well, rightly, so that there shall be no room for blame. See, the, the law of the sin and death is, is sickness and disease, right? The law of sin and death is sickness and disease, poverty, all right? Mental problems, emotional problems, instabilities, division, strife, hatred, anger, cursing, murders, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth speaks. You see, these things are in our hearts and they have to come out, glory to God. And the law of the sin, the law of life, which is Christ Jesus, allows us by faith to begin to take that ground back that we have lost because of the transgression of Adam. <clears throat> see, the scripture says that at the, the, the creature, they, they subjected, they didn't subject themselves willingly. In other words, Nobody asked for this. I didn't ask for this, right? <laughs> Did you ask for it? No. And what am I saying is that the law of the spirit of life of Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. So recovery here doesn't just mean you're going to get healed, but it also means every aspect of your life is going to get delivered in Christ Jesus. Amen. The emotional realms that we, the, the frustrations that we go through and the, and the disappointments that we go through, that's why you have to keep your heart on Christ, you know. The scripture says that Martha was complaining, right? Because Mary wouldn't help her. 
Martha was busy about doing many things, but Mary wouldn't get involved to help her. And the Bible says that Jesus told her, Mary has chosen that good thing, and it shall not be taken away from her. Who do you think the good thing is? It's Jesus Christ. He's the good thing. So what am I saying? I'm saying if you and me focus on Jesus Christ exclusively and not focus on the conflict or the problem, guess what? You've chosen the good thing. And guess what? Because of that, you're going to receive the life of God. That life of God in your spirit is going to come forth. The scripture says in Proverbs, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. Amen? Those issues of life are the things that bring forth power, that bring forth anointing, that bring forth strength, to break the yoke of the devil, that bring forth understanding, the spirit of understanding, so we can see by the word what the Lord is saying, so we can have ears to hear, eyes to see, glory to God, be able to walk in the spirit, live in the spirit, amen? Pursuing, 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 pursuing God, amen? I will pursue you, Lord God, amen? I'm going to pursue you in my life, amen? I'm going to seek after you, I'm going to walk after your ways, amen? And, and that's what we need to be, where we need to be at, constantly seeking Him, right? Looking for Him, looking for that answer, looking for direction. Have a, have a play, sense of sensitivity, expectation, and awareness that God's presence will go with you. Glory to God. I'm going to look at another scripture here, Psalms 84, I think, 11. Right? And I'm getting into something here I'm going to talk about, I want to address, Amen. It says, teach me thy way, Psalms 86, 11, O Lord, I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. All right? So if the heart is not united, right? So I'm going to, let's see, how can I do this? You know, you know the shape of a heart, right? Little symbol, right like that. Heart shape, right? So the scripture says that unite my heart, okay? So... Why would, why would that need to be necessary? Why would it be ne need to be necessary to unite my heart, amen, to fear your name? One thing we got to understand about the heart of man is the heart of man is made up of your spirit and your soul, all right? I'm going to post up uh, <clears throat> some outline, I mean a playlist of a teaching called the Marismos. And this teaching right here is has been available for years now, and uh, hang on, please. And and and, and, it, and it and it allows us to see so much, amen, of. Uh, so much revelation that God has brought forth. All right, so that teaching right there, Mary's most, um, but it says here, back to the word here, it's, unite my heart to fear your name, right? So why would the heart be need to be united if it wasn't divided, right? See, your spirit and your soul, they have to be in harmony, all right? There has to be a harmony there. The soul man has to be submitted to your spirit, man. You know the principle that Jesus said, the first shall be last, the last shall be first. Well, who was first? Your soul man, you. As a personality individual born, me, a few years back, right, <laughs> 52 years ago. And when I was born, my spirit man wasn't born, you see. It was my soul man, to be, right, that lived all these years until I got born again when I was 18 years old. All right? Now, up until that time, I, it was shortly after that. Actually, as a matter of fact, it was right at my 18th birthday when I got born again in that period. And... Uh, and I started pursuing God. I started wanting to know the Word. I want to know about this Father, Amen. This, this God, this Jesus that died for me, and so on and so on. And disappointed along the way many times because I couldn't understand why people didn't want to pursue God. And I didn't know, obviously, the graces and the gifts of my life at that time. And uh, but the point is, is that uh, my heart was full. My heart was trusting God. All I wanted to do was be around the Lord and learn about God. And and in that, you know, He raised me up. He trained me. He taught me His ways, Amen. But the point is, is that, uh, uh, you know, all I wanted to do was seek after God. Of course, I didn't understand a lot of principles in His ways yet, you know. And, uh, 
And, and praise God, as I've grown in the Lord, he's taught me these things. Now, listen to the scripture. This is uh, Exodus chapter 34, verse, verse uh, 4, Exodus 34, 4. And he hewed two tablets of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went up unto the Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him. And took in his hand the two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud. Amen. Cloud by day and a fire by night, praise God. And stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. All right. Talking about God's presence here. And why our hearts need to be united. So it says, the word proclaim is to call out, to call out, to recite, to read, to cry out, to proclaim. All right? As if you're calling someone. Except in this case, he was proclaiming the name of the Lord. The name is honor, authority, and character of the Lord. God was proclaiming his name. Amen? Not my name. Not anyone else's name. His name. Proclaiming, 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 proclaiming. Man, gosh. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord. Again, proclaiming. The Lord God merciful. This is God right here, okay? The Lord God merciful, gracious, long suffering, and abundant in goodness and truth. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin, and by no means cleaning them up. Clear the guilty is cleaning them up. In other words, he already had a plan, amen. He made a plan through Jesus Christ. And then it says there, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth in worship. And so it goes on here and says, he said, if, I, if now I have found grace in thy sight, Lord, let me, my Lord, I pray thee, go among us. In other words, be with us. For it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thine inheritance. Oh, my God. And he said, behold, I, I make a covenant before all thy people. I will do marvels such as have not seen before in all the earth, nor in any nation of all the people among which thou art, thou, which thou art shall see the work of the Lord. It is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. All right. So the point is that God said, <clears throat> I'm going to proclaim my name. I'll proclaim my name to you. And Moses wrote out the law again. And, uh, and again, the point is, is that God's presence, amen, with the word, amen, the word and the spirit. These are the things in, in, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. I'm going to jump back to that now. I hope y'all keeping up with me, praise God. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, right? And I brought this out last week. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two of your sword, piercing even to the divine son of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. So three areas right there that the word of God deals with. Um, soul and spirit, um, joints and marrow, and discerner of thoughts and intents. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in the sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. And the latter part of that verse says, open unto the eyes of him with whom, to the advantage of, that's what that word means, with whom is who, which, that, what, or that, to so whom we have, us, we are the word, to do is logos. So to the advantage of you have the word, all right, and the word of God is quick and powerful, etc. Now he can walk between the pieces. That's why it's so important to get involved in his presence, to allow that word to be revealed to your spirit, because he's going to need to correct you. He's going to need to make alignments and adjustments. But not only that, on the flip side, he's going to also bless you, lead you, and guide you, and direct you. Amen. And of his fullness that we all receive in grace for grace. All right? It's a grace, it's a grace, it's a grace that's being poured out, moving from grace to grace to grace to grace. Amen? Now, I want to read a couple of statements here. I 
One thing we need to understand about our spirit is that that's where the forces of life are, amen? The forces of life are the presence of God. That's where the presence of God is able to come forth out of. Amen? And, and Zoe is the only force that will change. God's life is the only force that will change behavior. See, psychologists and psychiatrists, everybody's always trying to adjust behavior. Even our, in our school systems, right, it's all about the behavior. Part, my majority of the problems that they have is behavioral issues. So therefore, how do they combat that? How do we deal with that? And even in our own life, you know, we have uh, issues with how we behave and stuff, and we allow that to bring us into condemnation. And there's four words that are used for life in the Greek language, bios. Bios is a livelihood, and estrophe is behavioral life. Suke is self life is always life God. And anastrophe, like I said, these are the areas that are trying to be changed the way we behave. The only thing that will, that will affect the nature of mankind and that will bring a force to truly alter the lifestyle is God's life, Zoe. <clears throat> so the degree to the degree of the alteration is to the degree of your spending time with God. Amen. The presence of God. Amen. The presence of God. Think about Moses and what he went through. And all these, you know, Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. How could he have done that? If he didn't have somebody ministering these things and sharing these things with him. He was communing with, communing with God. Okay? Now let's look at the scripture. This is James 1, 5 through 8. Okay? If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. They give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Double-minded is the Greek word dipsukos, which comes from the word dipsuke, which is twice solely. It means a split personality, a divided heart. And that's what I'm going to get into, divided heart. A divided heart occurs when a man's spirit is reaching out in faith and his soul is reaching out in unbelief. Here is a truly divided heart. One side wants the life of God, the suke man, he wants his own life. You're divided in your interests and your desires and your pursuits. All right? And, uh, and again, I said earlier that the heart is made up of the spirit and soul. Now, take a look at this scripture. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. The hidden man of the heart is the spirit man. What would the visible? So you got one side that's hidden, the other side that's visible. What do you think the visible side is? The visible side of your heart is your soul, your personality, you. You see? So your heart is where the conflict is, right? This is what causes us not to be able to receive from God, not to receive, not us not able to receive from God. Hmm. And what has to happen is, all right, and I'm not going to read this scripture, but this is Romans chapter 2, verse 23 to 29. And, and basically it says that circumcision is not a matter of, of the flesh. In other words, it was a, in, in the old, in the Hebrew, right, in the Old Testament, they had to cut away the foreskin of the male, right? And in doing so, right, what was going to happen? Now, whenever the power to reproduce and the male came forth, no flesh was going to touch it, all right? But now in the New Testament, it's the same principle in that when your spirit man comes forth with the life of God, because that's where the power is, that's where the progenitor lives, God, amen, in your spirit. When your life, when the life of God comes forth, and it gets negated by the soul of man, all of a sudden nothing happens, amen. No purpose of God can be fulfilled in that situation, all right? And I'm just briefly covering this. So circumcision is a, is a matter of the heart and the spirit and not of the letter. It wasn't about now natural circumcision, all right? And it's a matter of the heart. Circumcision is a matter of the heart and the spirit. With this in mind, amen, take a look at this scripture in Ezekiel chapter 36 and 27. 
It says, a new heart also will I give you. So it's implying something in addition to a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the heart of your flesh and I will give you, a, I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Two hearts here. One that's a stony heart out of your flesh, one that's uh, in a heart of flesh. So he's going to take out the stony heart and he's going to give us two things. First, he's going to put a new spirit, a new heart in you. Second, a new spirit. So you're going to get a new heart and a new spirit. <laughs> Does that mean he's going to take away the old heart? No. It means there's going to be some adjustments made to that soul man. Amen. Now he's going to start complying with God. Now he's going to be obedient to God. He's not going to be offensive to the Lord anymore. Now he's walking with God. Ezekiel chapter 11, 19 through 21, and I will give them one heart. So he's going to give you one heart. Does that mean we have two hearts? Lipsicles? So as I was saying there, and I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within you and I will take away, take the stony heart out of their flesh and I will give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them and they shall keep, they shall be my people and I will be their God. But as for them whose heart walketh after, after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their own way upon their own heads, saith the Lord, right? So there, clearly, hey guys, excuse me. All right. <clears throat> so it says here that uh, in Ezekiel again, I just read that eleven nineteen through twenty one, and it says, "Can can your heart follow after detestable things? Of course you can." That is why you must keep and guard and preserve it. Jesus said, "For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks." Out of the same mouth proceeded blessings, blessings and curses, my brethren, these things are not to be sold. See, so it can't be sweet and bitter water. So it can only be one or the other coming out of our hearts. <clears throat> the spirit that is born again is born of incorruptible seed and divine nature and cannot sin because it is born of God. Both sweet water and bitter can come out of the heart, but both cannot come out of the spirit. In the divided heart, one side is a heart of flesh and the other side is a stony heart. All right, we're trying to understand here a little bit about why the purpose of God so gets negated in our lives. So the description here of the heart of flesh is flexible, pliable, sensitive, easy to work with, under control and gentle. The other side of the heart is prideful, hard, rebellious, has self-willed tendencies and is arrogant boastful and unmanageable. The stony heart is your behavior or personality. The personality of man is a soulless realm, mind, will, and emotions. The moment you were born again, your heart became divided because you received a new spirit. Before new birth, your heart and soul were in harmony. At the new birth, however, you began to partake of the spiritual desires of the new nature, and yet you still had the selfish desires of the soulless man. One was still living like the world, your spirit was saved instantly, while your soul man is saved progressively. At the new birth, your kingdom became divided against itself. Born of the spirit, you're full of selfishness. So what we need to understand here is that when you get born again, you're not dealing with two natures, you're dealing with two lives. You have one nature, which is divine nature, which is of God, but now you have your self life and your spirit life. Life after the spirit, life after self. One is condemnation, the other is life. Amen. One is guilty, one is innocent. The di divine nature and the spirit man and the life of the spirit is always one is the life of yourself. So, okay, because of that, you have divided interests or desires. For the first few months after being born again, you have a struggle trying to follow the new life to begin flowing. Jesus really wants to begin a work of alignment at that time. Taking the newly divided heart and united it as one by the saving of the soul so that it can be joined to the spirit. Unification for cooperation. As the scripture says in Psalms that I just read, unite my heart to fear thy name. Unification for cooperation with one heart, one desire, one effect, and one purpose. So the scripture says in Colossians 3, 2, set your affections on things above, right? 
So if our affections are set on things below, there's conflict there. So it says, if your spirit affections are on things, your spirit affections are on things above, while your soul is on things on the earth, you are a divided heart. If you have a divided heart, you must keep your heart with all diligence and preserve it with singleness of mind. Until you do, you will never really change your world or the people around you. The only thing that will bring change is God's life, Zoe. The Zoe of God is in the Holy of Holies, your spirit, and it is not, and it will not appear in the outer court manifestation unless it passes through the holy place of your soul. Ezekiel says that God will give us one heart. All right. All right. So, um, so the point I'm making to you here is that we have, you have your own desires and you have God's desires, right? One side is of God, one side is of your spirit. This is how we're going to be able to understand and how to move with God and affect change all over, all around us everywhere we go. The scripture says, keep your heart. You must guard your soul, man. He's the one that wants to get out there and launch out, you see. Uh, have you ever uh, had something that you were gonna give to your children and, uh, and they're pretty, they're pretty excited about it, you know. Kind of, you've been, uh, uh, you've been advertising that, you know. I got something for you. It's gonna be great, great, great. And you, and you build them up, right? So that anticipation, right? That they get in, and then all of a sudden, oh, they can't wait. And, and then, and then, as you pause and you give it a few minutes, they, they just get all antsy. And, oh, come on, oh, come on. And 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 see, that soul right there is it still needs some maturity and training, right? That's what we don't want to be. We don't want to be at that place, man. We want to be led of the Spirit of God as He moves us and He directs us. Because now, like I said, your soul is under control. You're managing yourself, right? Now He can trust you, man. Now I can move to that holy place and come into the outer court and manifest my glory and my presence. Bring my purpose, amen. Bring my word, which is my will. Bring it my way, amen, which is through my spirit, man. Amen. Not out of the soul, man. It doesn't, it, God is not, let me see how to say that. It doesn't mean that God doesn't want us to be creative, right? And the creativity comes from your soul. He wants the inspiration to come from Him. Out of your spirit, man. He wants that thing to live forever, amen? In the life of God, in the presence of God. So, uh, that's the link. Like I said earlier, if anybody wants that, uh, that book, the Mary's Moses, it's in a PDF copy. I can send it to you. Let me type my email up here. Gmail.com. All right. So for those that of you that are interested and want to understand more about this soul man and how to operate from your spirit, amen, I encourage you to listen to that series called The Marriage Most, and then I encourage you also to send me an email and I'll send you that PDF format of that book. So it, again, all this is super critical because we're going to talk again about faith, the key element of healing. And without faith, the scripture says it's impossible to please him, right? And now faith is a substance. The substance is the Greek word that means uh, the substructure, the place it under. It means the foundation. That which has foundation is firm, actual existence. That which is real, the quality and the nature of God, substantial quality. Steadfastness, firmness, trust, and assurance. Faith is all these things. You see, <clears throat> the scripture says of, of, uh, of uh, Abraham, Romans chapter 4 verse 20, that he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. The word staggered is doubt, okay? He doubted not, okay? And the word doubt there is uh, diachrono, which means he didn't hesitate, he didn't pause. At the promise of God through unbelief, which is the Greek word epithia. Epithia there means no faith. And how do you get faith, right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And, and, and one of the things that God brought to me in understanding uh, these matters. Hang on, I'm sorry. I think I posted the wrong one. All right. One of the things that uh, 
that the Lord showed me. Let me see if I can open this one up real quick. Mm. Hang on a second. I'm going to post this, uh, this word of the Lord that God brought me. Where is it? There it is. And when you believe, you see. It's important to see because when you believe, you're actually now seeing what the Lord is saying in his word. You have to see it all right, to believe it. But when you believe in faith, you're seeing something that you can't. As it says here in, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, let me go to that scripture. The substance of, uh, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So you don't have evidence that you can see it, but you have faith because you have it in your spirit. And now it's able to come forth. Now you can say this mountain. Now you can pray over this matter. Now you can begin to ask God for the, the, the things that you need in your life, finance and healing and deliverance and so on. Praying for your children, praying for your loved ones, praying for your wife, praying for the city officials, praying for our president, praying for our brothers and sisters in the fellowship, amen? Now you can have faith that God's going to move on behalf of that word in your heart, which is your spirit and the soul, but coming forth out of your spirit. So Luke chapter 18, verse 1, the scripture says, let's go to that one. That's a personal word right there. Always, 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 always pray. You know, one of the things that we're accustomed to down in my family, with my sons, and my wife, is that we're always praying, amen. We pray in the morning, you know, we're going to leave somewhere, we pray. We pray in the evening. We pray anytime somebody's feeling infirmity or sickness on their bodies. Praise God, take it to prayer. And that's what the scripture says, and he spake a parable unto them that men are always to pray. See, for every circumstance and situation at all times, always praying, always asking God, seeking God, wanting God, worshiping God, praising God. And uh, and 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 Luke chapter eighteen verse eight he says, "Shall he find faith on the earth? Is he going to find it, Amen? In other words, the just shall live by faith. It's a natural, it's 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 part of your lifestyle in the spirit, Amen, to live in faith toward God. It's just what you do. This is how God does. This is what He does. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, Amen. What's the purpose of that? Why do we need faith? Because we need to be able to." Look and see what God is saying and what he's doing and what he wants to do in our lives. Take a look at James chapter 1 verse 22. But if we be doers of the word and not hearers only, we are deceiving ourselves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like an unto a man beholding his face in the natural, beholding his natural face in the glass. And for behold, behold, he beholdeth himself and forgoeth his way and forgetteth, and straightway forget what manner of man he was. That's the way it is when you look in the mirror, right? <laughs> you forget what you look like. I mean, I'm looking, my, I'm looking at myself with this camera as I'm broadcasting. I see that turn away. Most of that is already gone. In other words, I forget. And the point is here is that we got to be doers of the word. I mean, we got to, as the scripture says, uh, consider the Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Jesus Christ, the high priest of our homology, the high priest of our acknowledgement and our speaking the same thing as, as the word Christ Jesus. Amen. Consider him. Amen. And maintain that profession. Amen. You must do something with what you've heard in your spirit. Amen. You've got to act on it. Amen. And let me, on the flip side of that, how does doubt and unbelief come? It's the same way. When you have doubt and unbelief, you start professing, speaking the same as that doubt and unbelief. And guess what? You're negating the Word of God. You're causing the Word of God to be of none effect. You're being a hearer and not a doer. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. Take heed, brother, lest there be any of you in an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God, living God. Evil heart of unbelief. Unbelief is an evil heart. 
You see, this is where the divine heart is so important to understand that unite my heart. Get, bring me to unity to my, into my spirit. Synchronize us. We're, we're flowing the same way at the same time, in other words. Right? And so it says that doubt and unbelief is of an evil heart. Unbelief is of an evil heart. Man. You know, I think about some of these instances and brothers and sisters that have been involved with me. And, you, and, and really, when you start... Uh, when you when you're following God, when you're following that word, man, when you're seeking your sp the Spirit, man, you know, seeking God in your Spirit and following after God and listening to the Holy Ghost and so on, you begin to hear where men are coming from all the time, men and women, right? Because it's coming out of their hearts, right? When something derogatory or or, or, or wicked comes out of my son's hearts, I immediately bring the word to him. Because it's important, they need to understand that their mouth, their heart is speaking, their mouth is only speaking what's in their hearts. And it's the same thing for us. So if you're walking in doubt and unbelief all the time and whining, complaining, and murmuring, well guess what, you ain't getting nothing from the Lord. Because you're walking in unbelief. Apithia. And the remedy to that is God's word. <clears throat> Matthew 9, 29. Take a look at that one. Hmm. And when he was come into the house, the blind man came to him. And Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? Do you believe me that I can do this? And he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith be done to you. So in other words, he could have touched their eyes, and if they didn't have a belief, there wasn't going to be anything for them. But because they did believe, guess what? And their eyes were open, and Jesus straightly charged them, seeing that they no man know it. It's the same thing. See, if you have faith toward God that he can do it, so be it unto you according to your faith. Amen? According to your faith, down to whatever your faith is, that's what it's going to be to you. And be it is the word to become, to come into existence. According to your faith, come into existence unto you. Geneomai, genomai. Genomai. Amen? To generate. According to your faith, it gets generated. Glory to God. Listen to that. According to your faith and what's coming out of your heart and your mouth, as you receive it from God in your spirit, be it unto you. Be it bitter water, sweet water. Be it soul, carnal. Be it spirit. Be it blessing. Be it cursing. Death and life. Be it death. Be it life. Or the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. Mm. My goodness. And one thing about all this is it's, it's faith toward God, right? Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on into perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. You see, not laying again. Or the foundation of repentance from dead work. And the carnal man is going to be dead work. It's going to be death. It's going to be, um, it's going to be uh, the soul man. But the spiritual man, he's the one that's seeking after God. He's the one that's getting it from the Lord in his spirit. As he spends time in prayer, men are always to pray, seeking God, seeking his face, seeking his word, wanting to hear from God for his family, for his wife, for his children, for those that he comes in contact with, amen. Always bring him a fresh word of the Lord, freshness, amen. That the man of God may be thoroughly furnished, thoroughly fresh and equipped to bring the life and the presence of God anywhere he goes. Let me see if I can locate that scripture. That was so precious to me when I saw that. Second Timothy. Hang on. Mm. That the man of God be Second Timothy three. It says that the man of God be may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Mm. 
Hmm. The scripture says that the man of God may be perfect. Listen to that. Perfect is the Greek word artios, and it means fitted, complete. It means fresh, amen. Fresh anointing, glory to God. Fresh life, oh God. Bringing that life to the body of Christ. Bringing it to your family. Bringing it to your brothers and sisters. Amen. Freshness, amen. And the preceding word, it says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfectly perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good. Thoroughly furnished is to complete, to finish, to equip fully. Amen. That's what the word is to us. Amen. And God needs that from us. We need to be fresh in the spirit. Amen. Fresh and oily. Newness. Kindos means newness and freshness. Amen. Now, let's look at some hindrances to faith. Matthew 21, 18. Remember the divided heart. This all speaks to the divided heart. When you're divided, the, the life of God is not but able to come forth out of your spirit. And if it does come forth, it gets negated by your soul. Mm, Matthew 21, 18. <clears throat> mm. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away, man. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If you have faith, and doubt not, you shall not only do this to the fig tree, but also you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. All things whatsoever you ask, in prayer, believing, you shall receive, glory to God. Believing, glory to God, you shall lambano, which means to take, glory to God. Believing, you're going to be able to take, amen. Take of my glory, take of my presence. Take of the things that you request of me, glory to God. Take of my life. Take of my love. Take of one another, that is, bringing forth koinonia, relationship, freshness, right, of one another, taking it. Mm. Oh, my God. Praise God. Mark eleven twenty three. Praise God. Mm. You know, last week when the word of the Lord was coming forth, boy, I had those moments, man, what's so sovereign, so precious, amen. I didn't know what it was back then before, but now I do, now I understand, amen. And uh, again, for the glory of God, amen, so that Jesus Christ may grow up in our hearts, all of us. Mark eleven twenty three. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. Hmm. Diacrono means to pause and have a hesitation, but shall believe that those things which he saith, Lego, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Epo, Lego and Epo. We'll probably, well, okay, Lego, you know what Legos are, right? You stack them up, make little, you know, it's one thing after another after another. That's what he's saying here. That so whatsoever things you lay go, in other words, you have, a, have to have a specific path in your heart and your mind when you speak forth on the matter. That this matter is going to be resolved, that this person is going to walk, that this person is going to see, that this person is going to hear. You've got to see it in the spirit. <coughs> so when that, you speak it forth and pray for it on the matter, it comes to pass. Amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. All right. Now let's go to... Uh, Mark chapter 11, again. Hmm. Verse 21, And Peter called and remembered, saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursest withered away. And Jesus answering, said unto him, Have faith in God. Amen.
Verse 25, and when you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you of your trespasses. But if you, have, if you do not forgive, neither will your heavenly Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. So sin and forgive unforgiveness, all right, and attitudes toward one another cause the Word of God to be of little effect in our lives. Matthew chapter 18, verse 21. Matthew 18, 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? And Saint Jesus said unto him, I say un, not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Mm. My goodness. In other words, you gotta maintain your heart again. You gotta maintain and watch it when it gets you in an attitude of work towards your brothers and sisters. That's gonna cause conflicts. Double mindedness, dip suit coast, lack of knowledge, amen. My people perish, Hosea 4, 6, for the lack of knowledge. So all these factors right here are the, are the, are the areas that cause unbelief, which will always negate God's word to come, to come forth in our lives. Now, second section of this outline, is it God's will to heal? Exodus 15, 26. Hmm. See, God cannot move without that word. If you're, the word is not in your heart, then he's not going to move. He can have all the might and the power in the world to get the job done for your life, in our lives. Or you can have all the faith built up in your heart and in your life. But when you pray and you make contact with someone, and if you don't touch your spirit, man, and the life of God comes forth, there's not going to be any work of God there. There has to be authority in the word, amen? And he says, Thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in the sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Jehovah Rapha, amen. And the thing about that is that when it says that uh, I will put none of these diseases, what he's saying is, is that if you want to go that path on your own, because you're not going to be with me when you're in doubt and unbelief, you're not going to be in faith toward God. You're not going to be with God if you're moving out of faith toward God in the Word. So therefore, he's saying, I'm going to, there's no other choice. You're going your own path. You're not going with me. I'm going to cover you and protect you. You decide you want to get out from under it, you see. Therefore, you're on your own. Psalms 103, verse 3. Hallelujah. Verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities and who heals all your diseases. Glory to God. It is God's will to heal all. This is why he brought Jesus Christ. Grace and truth. I mean, um, for by grace are you saved. For by grace are you sozo. This is, this is part of it. This is what you walk in as a son or daughter of God, divine healing. <clears throat> And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate him. He lays them upon them that hate him. What that means is that you're allowing yourself to go that way. That's what's on the other side, if you will. <laughs> is, is, is a life of separation for me, for me. Oh, God, what time is it? 10.01. Let's go over... Mm, you got a long way to go, man. All right, so I'm going to talk about uh, this again here. Hold on, let's see here. When were you healed? Isaiah 53, 5. We're going to close with that scripture. Isaiah 53, 5. Praise God. Surely, verse 4. God. And verse 3. <laughs> He can go on this whole chapter. He is despised and rejected of man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. I want to see what that. Let's go read that in the message translation. But it was our sins that did that to him. 
that ripped the Torah and crushed him, our sins. He took the punishment and made that, and that made us whole. Through his bruises, we get healed. We were all like sheep who have wandered off and gotten lost. We've all done our own thing, gone our own way, and God has piled our sins, everything we've done wrong upon him, on him. He was beaten and tortured, but he didn't say a word. Like as a lamb taken to be slaughtered, and like a sheep sheared, he took it all in silence. Justice miscarried, he was let off, and didn't anyone really know what was happening? He died without a thought for his own welfare. Beaten bloody for the sins of my people. You see, this is the work that Jesus Christ did, amen. And we have him right here in our spirits, amen. And that life needs to come forth through our, to our own lives, personal, to our sons and daughters, to our brothers and sisters, to the nation, to the world. Amen. They need what we have in Jesus Christ. They need Jesus. And we have him right here. Glory to God. Break him off. The scripture says in, in, in 1 Corinthians 11, Take ye, this is my body which has been broken for you. In other words, as I've broken it for you, you break it off for the people. Give them my life, give them my power, give them my spirit, give them my presence, give them my strength, and give them my anointing. That reminds me of another scripture in 1 first, first Corinthians 2. Paul. Verse 4, and my speech, my logos, and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, for, the, for have, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. The hidden wisdom, the hidden in your spirit wisdom, glory to God, that's where the life is, that's where the presence is, and that's what needs to come forth all over this world and all over the nation. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this time and this opportunity to bring forth the word of the Lord, amen. I thank you, Lord God, for teaching us and showing us about the divided heart of God. And as we ourselves, O oh God, are causing your word to be negated in our lives, that, O oh God, in Jesus' name, teach us, O oh God, whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Those that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Amen. That soul, man, that's got his life reserved and maintained, glory to God, by his spirit and by the word. Amen. This is the one that I can teach. This is the one that I can show forth my glory and teach him of my ways because I can trust him, says the Lord. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name for this day. Thank you, Lord God, for those that will be partaking of this broadcast. I love you, Father, and I bless you, Lord God. And I thank you for your blessings and favor on your people through Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, amen. And I thank you for this, Father God. We partake of you, Lord God, all that we can partake. And grace for grace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.